Hey, this is Jesse with Create This. You might have tuned into my previous Hackintosh build with a 4790K CPU and a GTX 970 graphics card. I released that video back in December 2015, so, you know, almost January 2016. So it's been about five months. When I released that video, the 6700K CPU was the CPU to buy, but the Hackintosh configuration for the 6700K wasn't quite plug and play. Today, the Tony Mac x86 website has swapped over from recommending the 4790K CPU to recommending the 6700K CPU for new Hackintosh builds. So with that in mind, I thought it would be an excellent time to do a 6700K build. Here are all the parts that will be going into this. This is a, a bit more expensive than the previous build. The previous build cost about, with the 4790K CPU, cost about $1,300, maybe a little more depending on, you know, which components you buy back in December. I haven't checked the, the current prices. This 6700K CPU build has cost me $2,600 US before taxes. I live in Tennessee, so we have sales tax. So after tax, it was about, it was a little more than $2,800. It is a little more expensive. However, I'm also doing an SLI configuration. So I've got two 980 Ti hybrid water-cooled GPUs. So uh, that contributes a lot to the cost. These are, these are at least $600 each. For the record, the reason why I'm doing a dual 980 Ti GPU solution in SLI configuration is because of VR, all right? So this is, this is going to be a dual boot machine. I'm going to be running Windows 10 and Hackintosh on two separate hard drives. The, the dual 980 Ti's are not for the Hackintosh side. I'm not aware of any advantage in doing a dual 980 Ti SLI configuration for Hackintosh. They are strictly for the VR side. I have an HTC Vive and this machine will be dedicated to my living room for the HTC Vive and also for my own personal use as a Final Cut Pro 10 FCPX machine. So these are not for Final Cut Pro, they are for the HTC Vive. The rest of the components are a little more expensive as well. I'm using a RM850 power supply, so it's a slightly more powerful power supply than the previous build. And again, that is for the GTX 980 Ti's. Now, I hear all of you screaming at me already. There's a new GPU that Nvidia just announced. It's coming out at the end of this month, the 27th. I think it's the 1040 or the 1080. Uh, anyway, yes, I am aware of that GPU. I bought these intentionally before that GPU came out because this is going to be a Hackintosh build and I'm not entirely sure if those GPUs will be Hackintosh compatible on the launch date. I, I suspect there will probably be some problems with them. So for now, I bought the 980 Ti's. Down the road, I will probably replace them with an SLI 1040 or 1080 or whatever whatever the model number is for that card. Stay tuned for that. All right, let's, let's just list some of these products. So uh, we've got a, a Core i7 6700K CPU. LGA1151, just checking my sanity here. The motherboard that goes with that is a Z170XP-SLI, and it is also an LGA1151. I've got, I, I love having a, a network card built in, and these are fantastic network cards for the Mac. So this is a N900 wireless dual band PCI Express adapter by TP-Link. As I mentioned previously, I've got the RM850 power supply, which should be really nice. This time I'm going all water cooling. Uh, everybody gave me a hard time last time about not doing water cooling. And to be honest, I've never done a water cooling build before. So this should be really interesting. These hybrids, they, they come with the water cooling solution integrated. So I just have to find space for the, for the radiators. For the CPU, I'm doing an H115i Corsair water cooler. That should be really fun to set up and I'll, I'll detail all of that. For my SD cards, the last couple of times that I've done this installation, I've been experimenting with different SD cards. I bought these Lexar Professional 16 gigabyte SDHC UHS-1 633 times uh, SD cards. These are fairly expensive. I think this was $24 for a two pack. Uh, the reason why I moved up to a 16 gigabyte over an eight gigabyte is the last time I did a Hackintosh install, I, I couldn't fit the uh, Mac OS X and my Multi Beast onto the same eight gigabyte card. 
So I bumped up to a 16 gigabyte. I can also use these in my cameras if I want to. So that's, that's kind of cool. This should make for a really fast installation, like 10 minutes for the software download or something like that. Uh, the last time I went with like a, a lower grade SDHC card, it, it took a really long time to, to download the software, like an hour and a half or two hours or something. So I don't like waiting that long. If you like waiting that long, go ahead. You know, it doesn't matter, but I, I wanted a faster install. The nice thing about this motherboard and I think the nice thing about this processor is we're now uh, upgraded to DDR4 RAM. So this is uh, 32 gigabytes of, I guess last time I called this ball stick, but it's ballistic. <laughs> Crucial ballistic DDR4. 2666 is the speed. That should be pretty interesting. For the mouse, I went with a Logitech MX this time. I've done three PC builds in the last, I don't know, year. And every time I've gone with a different mouse. I used to have an MX back in the days when the MX came with like a chargeable base station. So I thought I'd try an MX again because I haven't really liked the other two mice. This is actually going to be my personal machine this time. Uh, so, you know. I spared no expense. The other ones were for my kids. What else do we have here? All right, so for the hard drive, we got a Samsung SSD 850 EVO. This is a 250 gigabyte SSD. Uh, some people have mentioned that there are compatibility issues with Samsung SSDs and Hackintoshes. I think I've maybe seen some of the symptoms of that. Like it seems like every time I start up my Hackintosh, I've got a couple of little like stray files in my trash can that recovered, but it's never screwed me. I've never actually lost data. So uh, I decided to go with that again. They're cheap, they're readily available, they're recommended by the Tony x86 uh, Mac website. So uh, I decided to go with it again. This is going to be my Hackintosh hard, uh, hard drive. I've got another 250 gigabyte hard drive that already has Windows 10 pre-installed. So if you're interested in a dual boot video, Check out the previous video for the 4790K. I'm not gonna cover the installation of Windows 10 all over again on a new hard drive. What I will do is I'll cover the migration process of that hard drive from one set of hardware to another set of hardware because usually Windows is a real dick about that. So uh, I'll, I'll do another video about that process. So I'm just gonna move the hard drive from that machine over to this new machine once it's built. But I will do another installation video for the Hackintosh software install on this hard drive. So that'll be pretty cool. Uh, keyboard wise, I went with the Logitech K800. The thing that I like about this keyboard is that the keys light up. Previously, I went with a solar keyboard and while I love solar and it works fantastically and I never have to, I never have to charge it, which is just great. Uh, my son has this keyboard. I bought it for him a year or two ago and I, I really like the light up keys. The solar keyboard doesn't have the light up keys. So I went with the, uh, the light up keys on this one and the keys feel a little bit better on this one too. And for the case, I went with the exact same case as last time. This is a Corsair Vengeance C70, and uh, I've learned a lot about it, thanks to everybody busting my balls over uh, <laughs> over the screw-ups that I made in the 4790K build. So, um, I'm, you know, I don't want to switch it up. I, I love the way they look. They're like a big ammo can. They're super easy to use. They've look, got a lot of great functionality and features. It's a very open design. Uh, so, we're going to we're gonna go with it again this time, except we're gonna add some water cooling. And the only thing I'm worried about is these two drive bays right here. I think I'm gonna to have to take out the drive bays and I think that's where my radiators for my 980 Ti's are gonna go. Uh, so I'm gonna to have to find some spot for the two SSD hard drives that I have. So we'll, we'll have to figure that out as we go. All right, that's it. That's the hardware in a nutshell. So let's, let's get started on the build. I'm excited. 